Okay, okay, folks. Good evening and welcome. Saturday night, I'm back by popular man uh, demand. It's Vincent Byrne and myself, Ben Gilroy. Uh, people say we're like the two old Egypts on the Muppet Show, Vin, up in the box, giving out about everything. <laughs> Vin, how are you doing? I'm glad, Ben, yourself. All good. So, uh, an interesting week. Um, we will be talking uh, about... Um, the Roscommon incident uh, later on and some protesting. We also want to be talking about rights and people exercising their rights. And um, there has been a number of small businesses I am aware of that have been listening to the advice that you and I give in, which is not legal advice, but it is constitutional advice, which the Constitution is for us all in plain English. So you don't really need any legal advice for that. And uh, one man in in Trim, County Mead, uh, tried to keep a business open. And we will give a little uh, um, teaser of what happened there, if we can run that now for Tiger Reborn. If you can run that little teaser now for us. Okay, Okay. 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 This is a, I'm telling you, I'm not interested in relation to the Constitution of the Union. There's three obligations and a call for it, all right? Do you understand? I okay, it's a healthcare, okay? I've had to explain three or four times. I can't do anything, okay? If you put the chairs outside again, okay, it wouldn't be possible. Do you understand? No, I don't understand. But I've explained enough times, all right? Like it says, I won't be up here haven't enforced it on me. I want you to encourage the engagement. You, you need to go and educate yourself on the Constitution. I don't need to educate myself on Yes, you do, because that's what you're here to uphold. The Constitution. Okay. All right, so, all right, so can I get an undertaking out and put the chairs out tomorrow? Say again? Can I get an undertaking out and put the chairs out tomorrow? You said we were allowed to have legal advice. Yeah. So, let, let, so, so let us get his legal advice. advice. Well, you see, you're not going to engage with us then. I didn't say that. Well, you, well, what are you going to do? You've already, you've already educated me, so you have one now about your business. Okay. All right. So, like I said, the chairs appear outside again. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Thanks very much. Are we done here? Yeah. Just as long as you understand. I don't understand. Okay. Are we done? Okay. Okay. I'd like you off the premises. Unless you're here as a customer. And then you're very welcome. All right, sir. We'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? Okay. Okay, Can I. uh, You go first here. I'm still in shock. Yeah, well, it is shocking. I mean, it's absolutely shocking. Uh, I think it was very clear that you could hear that that member of the Angarda Shia Khanna uh, was clearly disregarding what John said about the Constitution. Mm. Now, well, just to give people what a he said, he, he, what he actually said, Ben, was he didn't really care about the Constitution. It wasn't what John had said. He, he said he didn't sort of care much about the Constitution. Yeah, but the guard, the guard was making it clear he was disregarding it, if you yeah, will. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Now, the only thing that gives anyone any power or is empowering, if you will, they don't have in power, states, so it's yeah. em- empowered, uh, to do anything at all to create statutes, acts, any legislation at all is the Constitution. That's the primary mm-hmm. fundamental law, if you will, for yeah. the, and let's face it, the 26 counties as it stands. Well, let, let's even go a little bit further. He couldn't even be a guard. You know, he can't no. be a member of Angarda Shia Khanna because there is no Garda Shia Khanna if there isn't a constitution. The office exactly. is only created by the constitution. And an important point is he and every other guard, by the way, not just him, him and every other guard has sworn to uphold that constitution. That's their entering office yeah. with that oath. Now, to, to try to give people a better grasp on that, Ben, uh, how about we make people aware that, for example, um, I think marriage is a great example to give because people understand they go to a, a, a church, they get married, and then they also go and sign the register. Yeah, there's two marriages and that day, yeah. Essentially, there's a marriage, and then there's your civil union right. under the the corporate version of Ireland, if you will. Yeah. Or the contractual obligation version, maybe. Yeah. You're contracting into something. That's why it requires a signature. You see, God yeah. under God, as it were, or the concept of God, whatever way you want to view it, folks, but under that concept, you don't have to give a signature. You, you, you Your yeas are yeas and your nays are nays. Do you? Yeah. I do. Does she? She does. That's it. That's all that's required. Um, but legal land likes signatures. They like evidence of these things. And that's what it is. It's evidentiary. So 
Um, when on Garda Shia Khanna, well, at first when they uh, become guards, they hold up the constitution and they swear the oath. Yes. And then what they do is they then go and sign a contract to become a member of on Garda Shia Khanna, the corporation. Yeah. So they have two aspects to their uh, oath. And both of them are under the constitution. But one of them, of course, again, is under the people. Now, the people have the power under God. Again, as I say, I'm not trying to push religion down anyone's neck here. It's the concept, okay, the, the overriding concept of, uh, you know, a power greater than man, if you will. So do you want to throw in there, Ben? Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, well, fortunately, I mean, um, any office in the Constitution is exactly the same. It would be very similar to a judge of the high court saying to you, I don't care about the Constitution. Well, yeah. if that was the case, you'd be saying, well, what are we doing here? Because the office of the high court judge or the office of Angarda Shiakana or the office of a TD or the office of the president even only exist because there's the Constitution. And in those circumstances, it is not a la carte. It's not something you can pick and choose. You can't say, listen, uh, Articles 1 to 10 are great. Uh, from 11 to 15, I'm not crazy about, so I'm pushing them out. And the rest I'll, I'll think about, depending on my humour. <laughs> it doesn't Correct. work it's, that way. It's literally either it's all or nothing, literally. And if it becomes nothing, then anybody attempting to operate under a constitution which they're disregarding, they have zero power. They're just literally, they're back to just being a man or a woman standing in front of you again. Well, now, that's right. Just, and, just, and, yeah, sorry, Ben, go on ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, when a member of Angarda Shiakana acts outside of his office, he's vacating his office. Now, it's the same as when you're married, folks. If you if you go and cheat on your wife, um, maybe you get caught, maybe you don't. But let's say you are caught. You have violated your oath to her under God, if you will. And now, the state won't uh, recognize that. They wait until you apply for a divorce and you have to go through the courts to get that uh, managed in that regard. But... I can assure you, you get caught cheating on your wife. <laughs> it's instant. <laughs> yeah. Well, so so let's move on then to to the incident here today. So uh, John is a friend of ours. We know him years. He would understand what we talk about. And yeah. what happened was he he's not reckless. He no. understands COVID is there. Uh, back in March, in fact, the Gardaí had an issue with him again. And they sent the HSE out to check his shop. HSE said, no, you're doing everything perfect. I think it's important to say that as well. Now, this time, John followed exactly the same rules um, because the same COVID is there, apparently. And um, so he doesn't allow customers to sit down in the shop. Only so many customers can come in and order. I mean, everybody's used to this scenario wherever, anywhere is open. And the seating he only arranges outside. It's quite cold outside, but there's only a couple of tables. There's not many. And his point of view was simply this, that I have a family. I have a family to feed. I'm entitled to earn a living. It's essential I put food on my family's table. It's essential my business stays open because if not, I could lose my family dwelling through corporate nonsense. And because it's, it's essential, I mean, surely tonight um, um, the district court being open is no more essential than uh, John's shop being open for his family to feed them and that it might keep a roof over their heads. So, you know, that's why the Constitution trumps all. And, of course, he relied on Article 41.11 of the Constitution, and it's probably important I just read that out. Now, I only have the literal English version, but it's still OK because it still says what it says. The Irish yeah. direct translation is stronger. And obviously, if there's a contrast between both languages, the Irish one wins. It says that in the Constitution as well. But just so you understand, the state recognises the family. So John was a family in the sense of he's feeding his family. He's part of a family. He is a family. So the state recognizes the family as a natural primary fundamental group of society and as a moral institution, right? Now it says possessing. So that means the constitution is not giving it. it the no. state recognizes John as possessing these rights. And the rights are inalienable, imprescriptible rights, 
antecedent and superior to all positive law. Now, for those of you that don't understand, positive law is the Health Act and all those other types of things, guidelines and everything like that. So if John... Well, let's be clear, Ben. It's it's every single piece of legislation. Every single piece of legislation is positive law. The only thing that's not positive law, if you will, and some elements could even come in under that, is the Constitution. That's right, yes. So, So if the rights are inalienable, right, can't be given away, can't be taken away, you know, imprescriptible, antecedent means they've been there since time immemorial. And because the Constitution recognizes the uh, God as the you and I been, but if people don't, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to explain that the state does and the state requires you to believe God if you're going to take an office because you have to take an oath. And as you can't take an oath under the old oak tree, you have to take it under God. And um, antecedent. So antecedent means way, way back, mean back to the time of God, you know, when he gave the rights and superior to all positive law. Now, Vin, I know you want to explain to people how the Constitution is to be read, because I've already explained that you can't read it in a legalistic per- term, because in legal no. land and legalistic means black can be white, red can be blue, up can be down. A person can be a company, uh, understand can be stand under. I mean, it's just the nonsense of a language. So the Constitution wasn't to be read in that fashion. Isn't that right? No, in fact, uh, Justice Susan Denham clearly pointed out in some of our writings um, that uh, De Valera's uh, was actually very, very concerned about uh, the Constitution being understood and trans and, and, and interpreted in a strictly legalistic fashion. So even just the Susan Denham knows, uh, as do they all know this, folks, all of them know this, that not only that, though, Ben, it's even more so than that. As you say, it's it's the beginning and the end as far as their power, all their power or anything they have or, uh, you know, however they are operating. Now, the very important word there in Article 41 is imprescriptible, which means, which they try to get you to do this, you cannot sign away. In other words, your imprescriptible rights, even if you sign a piece of paper saying, I have no rights, the Constitution still applies. So even if you say, I'm signing away my constitutional rights, the Constitution says you can't do that, or at least the court will not be cognizant of you attempting to do that. Yes, yeah, that's right. And that's why I I see people sometimes protesting, saying, They're taking away all our rights. And I keep saying to people, you need to understand the words imprescriptible and inalienable. That means not capable of being taken away or given away. So even if you wanted to say to the government, look, I want you to take all my rights away, it's impossible. What does that look like? Can you put them in a box and deliver them? It's an impossibility. The only thing you can do with a right is choose whether you use it or not to use it, and that's, that's it. All. Now, there was, yeah, so there was a Sorry, thing, ahead, in the, yeah, there was a thing in the newspapers uh, about Hogan, uh, Judge Hogan, and Judge Fair Hogan um, is a judge who, you know, worked his way up. He was a, a very much a constitutional lawyer. He worked his way up all to the all the way to the dizzy heights of the Supreme Court, and then he um, he went to Europe. He now sits in the European Courts of Justice. And, um, you know, what he said was, um, I think he actually had a go at the Supreme Court, if I'm not mistaken, at one stage. He, he, he Yeah, he had a go about the Supreme Court even, saying some of your judgments are ridiculous for the last 20 years. And what he said, I'm just quoting him here. He says, uh, the reasons perhaps include the, judi- the judiciary's often disappointing record uh, since on the question of substantive rights. The record on procedural rights, in contrast, remains excellent. So he's saying, you know, when it comes to procedure, you're terrific. You know, if someone does something wrong according to the rules, they'll chuck their case out. But when it comes to substantive rights, your your record is dismal. And he said, the Constitution has to be either radical or redundant, he said. Being radical requires the courts ensuring fundamental rights of citizens are genuinely protected in a matter that goes beyond judicial cliches and tokenism. Now, if you put that in light of the guard in that video, he basically didn't even give tokenism to the Constitution. Not even tokenism. I think it's very clear. He, he vacated his office right there. 
He absolutely yes. vacated his office right there, in my opinion. And I think, by the way, we the people need to start recording all of these, record our names, because one day, folks, we are going to have to address this. One day. Yes. And look, when we I want to thank... Someday. Yeah, and, and look, we, we have to thank John Murray for making the stand. And we are obviously calling on a lot of other people to make the stand. And I'm going to tell you, whether they try to fine you or not, it's all bluff, right? Because at the end of the day, when you appeal it all the way up to the Supreme Court in the light of what Justice Hogan said, and even if you're not successful in Europe, like we will call for support on anybody facing fines or whatever else it be for standing up to the constitutional rights, okay? So our, basically not even standing up, it, it's just exercising the rights. And we will... Yeah. You know, support those people all the way. But remember, if you get to, if we had to go all the way to Europe, and I doubt that very much, by the way, but if it was a thing we had to go all the way to Europe, you have the likes of Judge Hogan in Europe and other judges there who know exactly what we're talking about, where he said the Constitution is either a radical or it's redundant. So what he's saying is, if you people want to be radical, about exercising your rights. I don't mean crazy radical and, you know, injuring people or something, but no. I'm mer merely saying being radical in the sense that over the last 20 years, you know, we're downtrodden. You haven't been taught these rights in school. And what he's saying is the Constitution is either radical or redundant. Now, what he meant by redundant was the judges, the guards, the TDs, the president of this country – can go and do one, a long walk off a short pier, because that means the Constitution is redundant. Or if you're in play and you're getting paid and you're getting wages by it and you swore to uphold it, then be radical and do that. On top of that, Ben, I mean, you know, every day of the week, people are essentially contracting with Gardaí in a private manner without realising it. They're engaging in contracts to find themselves or to be fined via... Um, going into court under legislation, whereas, as we all know, Article 41.11, I keep saying to folks, why, go read that in the Constitution and then say to yourself, ask yourself, why is that there? Yeah, now, the Smiths, when they were in court, <laughs> yeah, the Smith, I mean, the Smiths, when they were in court, he said it to the judge, and the judge basically said, that's preposterous. Yeah. Now, I would suggest any judge who thinks any article like that of the Constitution, I mean, it's preposterous. Again, they vacate their office. Many of them, uh, one of the judges in, in the Smith case actually said she was an atheist. And she said, yeah. I suppose I shouldn't be up here either. Well, that's right. She shouldn't. That, that's absolutely, yeah. And that's the radical part that Hogan was talking yeah. about. That is yeah. the radical part. You're absolutely right. You shouldn't be there. Because, yeah. once, because what it means is, if you're willing to put a Bible in your hand and enter an office, right, and take money for that office, and a well-paid office it is, and you're willing to lie on entering the office, well, what hope have any of us got? That's why you vacate that position straight away. And that's yeah. why Hogan said, judges in the Supreme Court even, your, your decisions over the last 20 years, you don't know, need a, 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 to be looked at. And what he said was, he said, um, there should be no uh, textual reason why that could not be done. And if it were, there should be no reason why Ireland, except in exceptional cases, should ever again lose before the European Court of Justice. All that is required is a judicial willingness to step up to the challenge. And that's the yep. challenge of meeting the very simple English text in the Constitution. Now, I, I'd like to make a point here, Ben. Uh, very simple point. When a judge, in, in, in my opinion, vacates their office like that, we need to tell them that, in my opinion, judge, and our conduct should be good, folks. Try to always maintain good oh, conduct. You know, don't use bad language. Don't let yourself down in your fam. Don't make your mother and bar father embarrassed to see you in there. But say to them, say, my, my feeling is that you vacated your office. Now, <laughs> one day, you know, you hear a lot of people saying, oh, it's very hard to get a judge out of office, and yada, yada, yada. Using legislation is because the judges know this damn well. That, but once they vacate their office, then they must then be asked by the people to take that oath of office again. And there's no way they can do that unless we, the people, say they can. See, initially, yeah. the oath of office that they take, supposedly, right, supposedly we're supposed to be okay with this. But you tell me, Ben, when's the last time you said it was okay for a man, an, an ordinary man like you or I, to be your judge? 
Well, I, I don't do that at all. I mean, uh, only if one is entering office and, uh, you know, you got to remember the oath is to show no ill will or favour or show no ill will to man. So, you know, if someone is going genuinely under that oath of office, as I've often said before, I never look for favours in court of any judge, nor do I expect to get one. But what I have met on several occasions is judges with nothing but ill will and bias to one side. And for that reason alone, they vacated office. And, you know, I'm trying to make a documentary in relation to that because that yeah. will be mind-blowing, uh, what we discovered in that one, Vin. Well, but yeah, this event, might be a good time. Well, hang on, this might be a good time to mention that um, there's a GoFundMe set of folks because Ben and, and a few others are trying to establish a new anti-censorship platform. And uh, if you could go have a look at that GoFundMe, I think we've only hit about uh, a th not even a third, a, a less than a quarter probably. Of what's yeah, needed we didn't to do. really push it yet, but there it is on no, the screen it, there I think now. it's time to push it. If you can yeah. click that, folks, because we have, there's a, I mean, we can't say too much about it, but no. it will happen. But we need yeah, the funding. And, and just to it not to confuse it, unfortunately, to make the documentary will be another issue, but we will talk about that at a later stage. But look, it has yeah. to be done for the greater good and change has to happen. I think it's probably time in because I know we said we'd try and kick, click off in about half an hour. So maybe it's time I to run. Okay for a little bit. Are we okay? Won't run the video. Well, I'd yet. like to stay on because I'd like to. I'd like to yeah, try we need to, to nail it home, I suppose, so still. people are very clear about this because I know a lot of business people are tuning in tonight, Vin, who have little small businesses, nail bars, uh, shops. I see. For some reason, it's beyond me. Dunn stores can open selling food, but they have to wrap up their clothes. I don't understand. Now, listen, I've long gone beyond the point of looking for logic in any of this, but the stupidity of all of this is crazy. I mean, this is supposed to be such a dangerous pandemic. Numbers were rising in Poland. They said it was true to schools and shut the schools down. And now, you know, we have children still going to schools and small businesses, uh, their whole livelihood being taken from them. And the deaths and everything else from suicide is ridiculous. So the Constitution is here to protect those people. Make no mistake about it. The articles in the Constitution, in particular 41.11, is the saving grace of every family and every family business in this country. On top of that, Ben, uh, the sanitizer that children have been asked to rub on their fingers in school, folks, has um, it's it's well... Let's just say it's some of the side effects is causing breathing difficulties for them. I'd like for schools and school teachers to reintroduce their children and their students to bars of soap and water. Just plain soap and water, folks. Wash the love, you know, yep. the love, plain soap and water and uh, use paper towels if you have to. You're actually better off. Children are going to get uh, dermatitis and all sorts of skin conditions from that. It causes breathing difficulties for some of them. And then they're putting masks on on top of that. They're breathing in and inhaling fibers from those masks, which I think is going to be like asbestos basically down the road because you're not supposed to wear those masks for more than a half an hour, I believe. I believe I'm believe i told it's a half an hour. Maybe it's longer. But you're certainly not supposed to be wearing the same mask all day or even half of a day. You're, yeah. what, what that is is a breeding ground for bacteria. And some bacteria grow very, very quickly in warm, moist conditions like that. And you then inhale the spores and the fungi and all that. You're inhaling them back in. You're going to give yourself a, a pulmonary pneumonia or, 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 or God knows what. But yeah, and these, these were reports that we read been from experts. We're not claiming yeah. to be doctors or anything like that. No, so anything we say, not. it's not our opinion. It's based on, on doctors' opinions that we have seen. And also, you talked about respiratory problems. Also, one of the side effects of the hand gel was headaches. Headaches and respiratory problems were the exact symptoms of COVID. So it yeah. just doesn't make sense. But just to get back then, I think, to the Constitution, because I know a lot of businesses are watching tonight, and a lot of them want to make the stand that John Murray did in Trim. A brave man, but he had to do it. He just felt, I have to do it. And not just for me, he said, I have to do it for every business owner in Ireland going through what I'm he going did. through. He, he was very um, brave. And, and courageous, yeah. and, and I think I think people need to think about that. And on top of that, he held his, his conduct was exemplary conduct, folks, which is yes. very important. You know, if you shout and let your, lower yourself down, you know, they get to twist that in the media, etc. If you hold yourself in, in a dignified position, right, I think that's very important. We, the people, should be dignified at all times. And tell these people, you know, when they try to come and, and, and apply things to you that you feel 
shouldn't be applied because don't forget that's what that article in the constitution says it says we get to decide when we're going to allow certain legislation affect us and yeah. our family we get to decide and yeah. This is the very article, by the way, that everybody is going to find very shortly in the next year or two. They're going to try and remove that from the Constitution. You watch. Yeah. You watch. And I can see them already attacking the family because once you attack the family and break up the family, then there is no family as per 41.1. And they will not confer that on everybody else. I can assure <laughs> you that. <laughs> Now, another point, Ben, you sent me a little thing there earlier, uh, the, the humanity uh, uh, what was this they called? Oh, yeah. The, uh, yeah. Well, what they're trying to do, folks, is they're trying to remove the concept. Now, the, when I say God here, folks, I'm not talking the Catholic Church and all of that. I'm talking the concept, the very concept of God. And the reason they want to remove that from the Constitution is as follows, because that would only leave any power coming from we the people. And that can be swayed under the socialist democracies that they want to bring in. Then you see, once people vote, oh, it's right. It's absolute because it's from the people. And in other words, you've no uh, pre-existing rights. You've no inverted commas, God-given rights. You have now yeah. zero rights except what the people as a mass permit, which, of course, yeah. will be 51% can be of the voting public can be convinced to, I don't know, allow you to do X, Y, Z, not public. allow you to do X, Y, Z, and that's it. And yeah. that would become absolute. And if that happens, folks, I, I guarantee you, if that happens, I won't actually be in the country. I'll be, I'll be long gone. Me too, because uh, I think another Supreme Court judge said something about constitutional rights. They're not set at naught, and then we try to mm. move from there. And what you're talking about, Vin, is removing God from the Constitution. If you do that, then all your God-given rights are gone. So therefore, your rights are set at naught. The government will decide what rights they'll give you. And remember, when government give you rights, they can take them away just as quick. And we're seeing where they're trying to mislead the people and they don't teach in schools what we teach here Vin. they just no. don't do it and the reason they don't do it is because you'll never see turkeys coming on uh, asking you to have two christmases a year because <laughs> if you're a turkey that's a dangerous business well, the, the one thing the one thing folks the one useful thing you can do right now if you have children is go find a book or something on critical thinking skills and teach your child how to think critically it's very simple. Or go to uh, yourlogicalfallacyis.com and teach your child about logical fallacies so that they can recognize them. And you yourself, so you can recognize them. Because all of these logical fallacies are being used against us by many, many newspapers, day in, day out, mainstream media. They use them all the time, appeals to authority and all of this sort of stuff. Once you get these in your head, you can spot them. You could nearly, you could nearly play uh, logical fallacy bingo when you're watching the news these days. Uh, you know, it, it's it's ridiculous, but it's very important that you learn them. The best website I've seen for it is yourlogicalfallacyis.com. Yeah, very good, Vin. So, so basically, what happened then with John Murray was you seen the guard come in on the first day. He warned him that he wasn't to open uh, the following day with uh, seats outside. Um, John couldn't really run a business without having people sitting down. And so he decided that he would exercise his rights to fend for his family while not being reckless, though, Vian. I think that's important because so no. many times people say to us, oh, wear a mask, you're being reckless. There's no scientific database to support that at all. No. In fact, there's plenty of data to say that wearing masks is spreading disease but not only the COVID-19, several other diseases. But it's important to say that John Murray, uh, his staff wear masks in the shop. Uh, they keep distance outside. When a customer leaves, they sanitize everything. So he took all the precautions necessary. So I don't know. Do you want to introduce now, Ben, or is there something else? You well, want hang, to say? hang on just a second, yeah. because I'll say... I mean, I actually know John's restaurant very well. I actually put the floor down. <laughs> I put the floor yeah. down for him. It's actually quite a large space. They could... Uh, have people inside and social distance by quite a bit, quite frankly. It's a very large area. Yeah. And, you know, I also know of John's history. Uh, John uh, had a very hard time at the, when the Celtic Tiger uh, was had its throat slit by the Irish politicians, of course. Um, he had great, he won't mind me saying this, he had great difficulty. He was facing, you know, uh, courts, eviction courts, all of that jazz. He eventually, uh, with a bit of advice from me, uh, just on private friendly advice from me, uh, I was looking and paying attention to what was happening in his court case. 
And I, I, at the end, I said to him, John, I think they're just going to shaft you anyway. I think you have a chance to make a deal with the bank. I, I, I advise him to go do the deal with the bank folks. And he did. And that's how it was. He managed to get himself back on his feet. And that's how he just barely managed to get that new business open. It's only open about a yeah. year or so. And of he course, got the that new business he has been, if it closes, the deal that he got yeah. to get out it's of gone. the courts to try hang on to his business will be scuppered if yes. he doesn't open. So it's ridiculous. Yeah, and then, like, where will that guard be? If he was getting evicted, will the guard stand with him and say nobody's evicting this man because you know uh, I have well, I shut business? I think, business. The answer to that. I yeah. think we all know the answer to that one. Yeah. The guard will probably, probably grab by the truck and call him out. evict them. <laughs> yeah. Well, look. Uh, the other thing, Ben. The other thing in, that we need to cover. Um, Strokes down. Oh, sorry. Maybe maybe we, it is time to play the second clip now, yeah, and then we'll come on. Yeah. 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 Are you going to take the table down? Yeah. No, just this night. Is that no relation to the exemption from the court? No? No. Alright, so are you going to take the table down? I thought you were talking to me. I was up here yesterday. I was up here yesterday. I just want to explain my thing, okay? And I'll let you talk. So I was up here yesterday, okay? And I encourage you and engage, okay, in relation to the Code of Regulation of the Act 1947. Which is all part of the laws. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I've, I've explained the whole thing in relation to your regulations and obligations, okay? And I was my, my right. One second, just one second. I've asked you to take the table to yesterday. You were, you didn't give an undertaking one with other. We're still outside this morning, people sitting at them. Which is a contravention, contravention to regulation, okay? So I'm going to encourage you now to take the table to. I'd advise you to go on. No, no, I'm going to take the tables in, sir. I'd advise you to go on. Before you start the third, No, 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 sir. I'm going to take the tables in, sir. Sir, sir, I'm a member of Gardaí Economy. You're not. Well, make sure you stay outside your office, sir. Of Gardaí Economy. What's your name? What's your name address, sir? What's your name address? If you read the What's your name address, sir? I'm asking your name address. I'm not obliged to give my name address. Okay. Fair to give a name address under the Healthcare Act is a rest of the So, I'm asking one more time. I'd write to my inside now. So, can I have this station? Yeah, no problem. Sorry, excuse me, Garda. Can I ask you your name? Sorry? Can I ask you your name? You say give somebody... Thank you. Okay, sorry. I, I just want to say something about that. Number one, um, that was a civil matter, folks. This is very important. People realize the difference. Civil matters and criminal matters are very, very different. And in fact, there's plenty of uh, uh, books out there on the Irish Constitution which clearly state Irish courts matters are either civil or criminal. I've heard judges in court say things like, oh, it's a hybrid. There's no such thing in Irish law as a hybrid or partly civil or partly criminal. It's a nonsense. It's either civil or it's criminal. Plus, that guard mentioned that John had an obligation. Obligations can only be entered into knowingly, and you must signify a legal obligation in writing. No such obligation exists. Sorry, Ben, go ahead. No, you're okay. He made it very clear. Now, John was interrupting him, telling him you need to read the note because he highlighted the Constitution uh, 41.11. The Garda's oath was on that note. There was some Supreme Court case uh, that he should have read. And as John said, when he asked him his name, he said, my name's on the bottom of the document if he even read it. Now, when John was trying to interrupt, he said, listen, I'm a, guard of member, a member of a Garda Shiakana, and I'll give you a chance to speak. He didn't give him a chance to speak. He never gave him a chance. So this is, uh, uh, this is how the Nazis started. Now, when he said, I'm a member of Garda Shiakana, he actually wasn't. He vacated no. his office because he ignored the constitution that he swore to uphold. So that's tough shit for that guard because when John gets him on the stand in court, John is obviously going to say, did you or did you not swear to uphold the Constitution? Show me the part 41.1.1. Does it say my rights as family are superior to the positive law you were using? Yes or no? And then he should sue him in his private capacity. Because when these guards are acting as liars, not lawyers, liars, because they took an oath and then didn't mean it. They didn't mean yep. it. And they're not brave enough to be radical like the Supreme Court justice told them to be. They want to be brown nosers, uh, licking arse of sergeant in the station or something without being radical and brave in their job and saying, well, hold on, sergeant. 
you know, I took an oath of office to be a guard to fight criminality, but to hold up, to hold the rights of the family. And if you're not brave enough to do it, then I don't think you should be a guard anyway, because no. if you're not brave enough to do that, you're hardly going to face down three burglars in my house. So you're not worth a shite anyway. Get off with yourself and become a window cleaner or something. Let's not forget also, Ben, uh, Frances Fitzgerald, I believe it was, when she was Minister for Justice, uh, she had put something in place that said uh, essentially that, oh, unless a member of Angarda Shia Khan is aware of the article of the Constitution he's in breach of, or that he's overriding your rights in, then it doesn't count. That he must be aware of your constitutional rights. Well, or else if, Francis Fitzgerald, if Francis Fitzgerald can show me that article of the Constitution, then exactly. I will eat both my shoes on our next live video bin. Because yep. when, you, when you swear to uphold something, it's a book, it's only got 50 articles. And when you swear to uphold that, She's honestly saying, swear to uphold it, but if you don't know what's in it, that's okay. That's like becoming an electrician and you're licensed yeah. to be an electrician, but you say, ah, Jays, I don't know how to wire a fuse board, so I'll wire, that, I'll wire it anyway at all. Exactly. I know the family has rights to being safe in their home, but if they all burn to death, I'm okay because I didn't really know exactly. about electricity even when I know I was an electrician. Such horse shit. And an electrician doesn't take a note of office and, and doesn't get paid by the state. You know, so this no. is why this is even far more stupid than I could ever imagine. Well, I, I would like members of Mgarda Shia Khanna to realise that if they actually have a, even a cursory read of the Constitution will explain to them that, believe it or not, folks, and this is, believe this, this is true, every single Irish man and woman and child is equivalent to the Queen of England with regard to their sovereignty. And that's how we should be getting treated. Yeah. We are a sovereign people as individuals and as a collective. And yeah. because you can't be as a collective if, on, if, if you're not as an individual. I mean, if, if no one can fly individually, then nobody can fly as a collective, right? I mean, it's not rocket science, as, it, science, as they say. Uh, on top of that, I, I do, I can, I'm just uh, looking at the time there as well. I'm aware of that. I, I just, can we talk about Strokestown, please, for a moment, Ben? Can we just uh, sure. uh, go into that, please? Yeah. So, look, you and I were always of the position, Vin, that if a bank, or any company for that matter, want to do business in Ireland. Again, just the same way a bank does business here, it has its own constitution. If it does something ultra-virus to its constitution, it can be fined. If it doesn't do something that they're supposed to do in their constitution, you can sue them. But the overriding constitution of all company constitutions in Ireland is obviously our constitution that the people gave and adopted for ourselves. And if you're in this country, you have to obey that constitution. So if you're a bank and you give mortgages out on family dwellings, then you have to realize that you took a risk. The risk is yeah. most of Irish people will pay their mortgages. That's terrific. When a bank collapses the system itself, that creates a problem. The defense that was put in our constitution, because you've got to remember, we came from a crown system that only wanted to rob the property and the land, and it was our forefathers. That's the beauty about and, it. You and did so. Come. Yes, that's right. And, and, did and actually so. did. Yeah. Without, without internet and, not, and everything else. But, but you don't have to trust Vincent Byrne and Ben Gilroy. It was your no. grandparents or your great-grandparents that done this for you. And why do you think they left Article 41.11 there? So also, the dwelling is inviolable, save in accordance with law. But that somebody asked me, what does save in accordance with law mean, Vin? Do you want to explain that? Or Yeah. I mean, it, if you want it on a, a basic English understanding basic. version, folks, is it's unless it's in accordance with law. That's right, yeah. In so words, in other words, if it's not in accordance with law, law, no good. Yeah. If the law permits it. Now, now that's not that's not positive law, folks. No, exactly. I was just going <laughs> yeah, to say yeah. there, and that's why 41 talks about positive law, where the dwelling being inviolable talks about law on its own. So there's a clear distinction, and it happens a couple of times in the Constitution, but there is and a clear it's distinction. Even, it's not even their law, Ben. It's not even their law. It's no. just law. law. Folk. That's right. Yes, yeah, even accordance with law, and so yeah. there's a distinction there between law and positive law. So the 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 writers of the constitution, your 
grandparents, my grandparents that came out of a colonial crown system that was teething the people, you think they were going to leave uh, an article to make it easier for corporations to then take your homes? Not at all. Nor were they going to leave an article for a sheriff to come in and take your homes. Not at all. And That's like, why the sheriff's office is not look, in the Constitution. Not only is it not in there, Ben, there's actually no provisions for a sheriff in any regard in Ireland, not revenue sheriffs either, folks. And bear this in mind. When a judge makes a judgment in a court, folks, um, he doesn't show up at your dwelling or your property or whatever you want to call it to, to execute. Nor do the on Garda Shikana. On Garda Shikana supposedly are only there to make sure there's no breach of the peace, which we've seen them disregard that completely on especially numerous in occasions. Strokes down. Well, especially in Strokes Town, we saw them. In Strokes Town, we saw them actually committing common assault on people. In in the Smiths uh, uh, situation again, okay. common assault happened right in front of them. Then remember, there was a bit some big property developer had a place in the city centre, and That's they right. actually turned their back while the heavies under the sheriff. That's uh, right. They turned, they him away. They to the actually turned their yeah. back. And they turn away and they say, oh, well, if I don't see it, I don't know what's happening type of thing. Th they are vacating their office when they avert their gaze. When they avert their eyes, they know there's criminality happening behind them and they turn away on purpose. That's a that, that is vacating their office because, yeah. you know, I don't know how else to explain it to people. I mean, uh, you know. It would be like if you were walking down the street, Finn, and you seen a burglar leaving a bank and you thought, I'm going to tackle him. Then you see two or three and you think, I'm going to yeah. shoot myself. I'm not going to do anything. So you don't even radio for help. You do nothing. You wait till they go, and then yeah. you pretend you were a guard and you enter on a scene. Yeah. And so it's well, like here, here, you're not example. really a guard. You're just doing it for the wages. Well, here's one for you. If you actually see somebody drowning and you turn away and walk Absolutely. away, you can, and if they die, you can be done for murder, folks. That's because right. even if you're not capable of helping them, but as long as you attempt some way to help them, be it call the, to call the lifeguard, the coast guard, throw them, throw them something, shout to them, say, I'm going to try and help you somehow. I don't know what you do. But as long as you attempt to do something, you, you're good. You're good uh, yeah. with, with the law, with law. But if yeah. you don't and you turn your back, you, you can be done for murder. And the reason for that, Vin, is because people think Gardaí have special powers. Gardaí yeah, can only have the powers that the people have. Because in a republic, all power comes from the people. That's why under I said God. to someone before. But it's from the people. It's from the people under God. Under That's, God. It's not That's just right. from the because, people. That's because very I, don't have, I don't have the right at all unless I got it from God. That's the principle. But yeah. if I seen somebody, say, stabbing a child on the street and run into their home and shut the door, Vin, do I have the right to kick in that door and arrest them? Absolutely. Don't I? 100%. How yes, does the guard, do. the guard also can do it, but where does the guard get that power to do it? Because we have it. That's it's inherent right. in us. And if I couldn't do it, he couldn't possibly have the power to do it. That's Absolutely. why they can't. I, mean, I, I put an article up there, Ben, the other day on my page. Uh, you saw it, I know, um, talking about, uh, oh, they want to give the guardian extra powers to go into your house to check things about, uh, you know, how many people are in your <laughs> dwelling. I should stick with dwelling because it became dwelling in that article, folks, all of a sudden. Like, if you go yeah. into a court and you say the D word, as Linda Smith told the court, dwelling is not a dirty word. Some of the yeah. best lines I've ever heard spoken in a court in my entire life. She told him because he kept saying, hey, your property, do you mean my dwelling? Uh, your home, do you mean my dwelling? Uh, your house, do you mean my dwelling? Where you live, do you mean my dwelling? And she said to him, dwelling is not a dirty word. And yeah. I swear to God, you couldn't hear the pin drop in that courtroom. And he knew it too. He knew yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. And not only that, you know, I was in court recently and the barrister was looking for my private principal residence. Now, we know in yeah. law of in what residence mean. It means a business premises. And yes. I said, oh, thank God. I said, I thought he was after my family dwelling. I said, <laughs> I didn't even know I had a residence, a private prim primary principal residence. I didn't know I had one of those. If he wants that, he can have that. I never use it. Right. And next minute, there was this silence in court about Mr. Gilroy's giving it to us. Oh, he's not giving it to us. No, it only exists, you see, the, 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 the so-called premises exists as a concept. It's not a physical thing. This is the other thing everybody forgets. The dwelling, folks, this is my dwelling. It's a physical thing. Property is something that's a concept that's only on paper. It only exists as a legal vehicle, right? That's right. That's all. It's just a concept. It's why, not a that's thing. Why, that's why quite often, Vin, they say we want all the property in the folio. But sure, the property yep. in the folio is the piece of paper. 
And That's it all. reminds me of the Woody Allen film one time. He was going around with a shoebox, and in the shoebox was a sod of turf. And right. I remember some guy said to him, what's that? And he said, oh, my father left me some land. And he opened it up, and it was just this sod of grass. <laughs> Well, he was telling the truth, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <That's some land>. absolutely. <laughs> but uh, these, these are commercial courts as well. And because they're commercial courts, they can only deal in commerce and they can only deal with commercial property. The dwelling is a different beast altogether. And banks and courts and everybody else knows you cannot inviolate the dwelling because you can't contract the dwelling rights out of the Constitution. And furthermore, Correct. furthermore, that's why the judges will never sign an order for possession because they know it, I know it, Vin knows it, and hopefully most of you will know it from listening to me and Vin over the last number of years. Always stick to the dwelling. I had in my affidavit that they were coming after the primary principal residence. I even put it in writing. They can have that. If I have one, I never use it. So listen, Vin, if I had a property and I never use it, I'm a decent guy, you know. Sure. And somebody sure. wants it, just have it. You know what I mean? I'm cool that way. If I had a, a tool, like I had two tools, Vin. You remember the gun ones? I gave you one because I can't use two. And I know you, you, like, your, you like your gadgets and your tools. Actually, it's a very handy tool, isn't it? Great tool. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, by the way, just be better say what it is. <laughs> the might oh. thing I'm <laughs> Well, it takes gunpowder, Ben. Yes, that's right. It does. It it's like a hilti gun, except for it's a small little thing. I got them in America. You put a bullet in, push it against the wall, bang, and but it's a terrific tool. But I have well, to shoot nails. Uh, it'll shoot nails straight into steel, which is what yes. I wanted it for. Yeah. But just, just come back to another little thing there. Uh, another time. It's again tiny little thing there, folks. Um, the, the, how can I express this properly? The rights, the so-called rights everybody thinks they have, right? When it comes to the Constitution, right? I don't want to, I want people to be clear on this. You'll go into a court and they will completely ignore and, and stamp and abuse all of those rights. That's happening right. up and down the length and breadth of the country. That well, doesn't mean you're banks, wrong. Yeah, the banks and, are and, paying and, them and to the do that. Say it, and the more we say it to people and the more we express that in the courtroom, the stronger that's going to become because they can't, you know, many of us are going to, you know, have a hard time with this, folks. Let's not, you know, beat around. Like, I had a hard time with a lot of this stuff, Ben, as I know you did, and yep. many others. Um, you know, I mean, <laughs> this is not easy, folks. I don't want everybody to think, oh, I tried that and it didn't work for me. It's yep. not about whether it works or not, folks. This is about what's right and what's wrong. And if they're not going to ab ab abide and adhere to the actual Constitution, which is the only thing, the only thing from we, the people, I might add, that empowers them to do anything. If they're not going to abide by that, well, quite frankly, take them. Then why should they? they, they also there's no rules, know, then there's no rules. That's right. And they also know that when you're in court, most people aren't used to it. Most people are nervous. So a judge knows if I stare at this guy or shout at him or threaten him with contempt, that, you know, yeah. he'll give in. And a lot of people do. And do not give in to these Fucking psychopaths, okay? Do not. They know very well what they are doing. They could recite the Constitution backwards in Latin yeah. uh, compared to me in vain. So we are minnows compared to these people. They know it inside out. They were taught this. They know it before they became a judge. The solicitors know it. And that's why they will never say in an affidavit, oh, I heard Ben and Vin giving out about uh, the principal primary residence. Well, let me tell you this then. I'm going to change it. We're coming after your family dwelling as per article, uh, you know, what is it, 40? They will five. never say the word dwelling. No. And, and on top of that, folks, people need to get this one straight as well. I hear a lot of people talking about eviction. There's no such thing in, no. as eviction in Irish courts. They seek, what they actually seek are possession orders. It's not even repossession, as the Master yeah. of the High Court pointed out to many people. It's not repossession. It's possession orders. Yeah. Eviction was under the Crown, and the reason eviction was under the Crown is because subjects essentially uh, only have privileges that the Crown grants to them. That's and right. that's it. And that's what they can be by the way. Any yeah. And we don't have a Crown here, folks. Yeah, and so and remember that, and remember that the British legal system is exactly the same as it was when our grandparents were here 
That's the same system here today. It's the same bar. It's the same law society. It's the same King's Inn. I mean, the clue's even in the name, King's Inn. Yeah. And they were all set up by King George to keep the Catholics out and keep them downtrodden. Nothing has changed. And it was all about robbing your grandparents and your great-grandparents' property. Nothing has changed. So when you go into that court, you know, I know there's a biblical saying about put on the armor of the Lord, but also yeah. put on the armor of your grandparents. You know, think of how they fought for those rights. So Vin says how it's not going to be easy. Then, how many people are aware that the government of Ireland doesn't actually own Leinster House? It pays rent to the crown for that building. I would say very few. I know, I know a few, a lot more since we've been talking, Ben, but generally very few. And this is the stuff you don't hear on RTE, let me tell you, folks, or no. TV3 for that matter. And isn't it astounding, Ben? And we have always said, and I want to put the challenge out there again, that we would welcome any judge, any ex judge, Absolutely. any barrister, any solicitor to come on. And show us the error of our ways. And I know you have Absolutely. done the pin on several occasions on your radio show. You used to do that. And did you ever get well, one take you up on it? Never. Never. Wow. That's interesting because quite I, often... I, I bear this in mind, Ben. On many occasions when you were in court, it would be mentioned, oh, Ben Gilroy was interviewed on an internet radio. They never even <laughs> mentioned the name. They were they afraid. They even asked for your details one time, but I don't think they ever called you. <laughs> no. So, folks, it's not like they don't know. I mean, every time in court, and I'm sure this video will be produced in court again, oh, look what Mr. Gilroy was saying. but no, And they all just say, oh, that's ridiculous what he's saying. But that's not actually a good argument. I mean, let's say there's this professor on, and he's really well educated, and what he's saying is absolutely fact. The mere fact, that I don't know what he's saying, to say, oh, that's ridiculous, doesn't in any way water down his argument or what he says. It might be different if I say, well, I don't have a degree, but I did read books, and you said X, Y, and Z, but that's not quite correct because here it is in this book. And, and then that's how you get to the truth. So we could well, be the absolutely... Thing, yeah, we, the strongest we've... thing we've always done, Ben, is we've yeah. always said, and I've always maintained this, folks, because whenever I was on the radio doing my thing, I kept saying to people, yeah, I'm not giving you my opinion here, folks. This is what they've written in their books. And I could always, if, I, if anybody ever questioned me, I'd say, yeah, hold on. I'd go get the book. I'd hold it up. And I'd say, this page, here's the ISBN number. Here's the name of the book. You can go buy it here. It's 20, 30 quid, whatever, or 500 quid if it's a legal book, maybe. And that's what it says on page 52, 83, third paragraph right. down. So I, it's not I didn't good enough. It's not I good just enough said, this is what they said. Yeah, and it's not good enough then to say, look, um, um, that's ridiculous. That's not an argument. That doesn't no. prove anything. What you have to come on and say, no, you're misquoting Article 41.11. What it's actually saying is uh, not the family, but it's the, just the mother alone. Or, and, and get into the argument. Then we get to the truth. Now, there was something on the screen there, Vin, I just want to address because it is yeah. important. Somebody asked a question. Uh, does a council house uh, equal a family dwelling? And the answer no, to that is... No, but it is, does equal a dwelling. Yeah, that's just... It is a dwelling. And um, yeah, and not only not, that... But careful. People have to be careful. It's not a family dwelling. It's no, just, just dwelling. dwelling. Yeah, there just doesn't dwelling have to be family in it. Like, earlier on, we were talking about family rights. That's for the family. But this is a dwelling. That can be anybody. That can be you and your dog, okay? So you don't have to be a family to have a dwelling. In fact, a homeless guy in a tent in Phoenix Park, that's his dwelling. That's his dwelling. If you're that's sitting dwelling. in your if you're sitting in your car, that's your dwelling. When you're in your skin, that's your dwelling. That's why your skin can't be forcibly entered into. Save it's in where the you dwell. law. Now there really can't be any law to enter into your body. That's why, as I always say, if you want to have sexual relationships with your girlfriend or whatever, provided she consents, that's yeah. terrific. And the only thing that will have you a nice breakfast with your girlfriend or going to Mount Joy for a long time is consent because you can't forcibly enter. The same with vaccines. Man. People are spotted about vaccines forced on them. Again, you can't force into the maybe, skin maybe because it is the dwelling you're living in protesting. your skin. Good time to talk about protesting, Ben. I mean, I know there's a lot of people 
get very impassioned and very, you know, where was everybody at the protest? I've, I, I'm not a protester, folks. That, that's not a thing I do. What yeah. I do is I activate my rights, and, and I mean my rights, mine, they're mine. Yes. Uh, you know, effectively, one of the best, this is an, a, a small sentence I came up with to, to spread to people that has really helped many, many people, and you'd be amazed how useful it is. Nine words. I don't discuss private family matters outside the family. And that is a wonderful line. I came up with that yeah. a number of years ago to help a few people. And, and I it's, want to it's say to people, Vinny, really, if they should type up those words and keep them in their yeah. car, on their visor, the guard says to you, where are you going? I said, my journey is lawful. And then, well, mm. where are you going? Flick it down. I never discuss private family matters outside the family because they yeah. know they have no jurisdiction into what is in Correct. the private the reason for that is because the people don't have that. I can't, well, right. I can ask my neighbor next door what he does well, they can in the bedroom with his wife. They can, can ask, ask anything they like. Absolutely. That's very important. Because You're right. They can, they can ask what color knickers is your girlfriend wearing, folks. That's but right. you don't have Absolutely. to tell them. No, and that, that's why somebody says to me, has a guard got the right to ask you such and such? And I said, yes, yes. but I have the right to ask you that too. <laughs> sure. So I can ask my neighbor what he does with his wife in the bedroom. He can choose sure. to tell me or not, or he could say that's a private matter, Ben. Well, then, then yeah, I can't force him matter. to tell me. Yeah, a private family yeah. matter. So, yeah, well, so listen, in regards man. to protesting, Ben, I'm not a big protester myself. I don't really think they achieve much and, and people might say oh you're a hypocrite I've seen you at a few look I've often been asked with you to talk at them and but I still sing the same hymn sheet I'm singing here tonight where I tell yeah. you we are the people we are That's the it. many they are the few and we have all these rights not them in fact it's, we it's only our them. compliance it's only That's our only. compliance that gives them all this folks yeah and listen, I don't want to okay. give the Gardaí a bad name either. Listen, no. let's be honest. Most Gardaí, Vin, that you and I ever uh, come across are decent, honest guys, right? Absolutely. But they just Absolutely. don't, maybe are not fully aware of this stuff. And more and more of them are becoming aware of it because they're being made aware of it. And so that's why we say, look, it, do you, do, I know Gemma Darty was giving out about me last night drinking a pink gin, thinking I'm going to save the country with a pink gin. I don't think that's really the point of <laughs> having the pink gin. Jamie, Michael, I must be in trouble, so. Well, it's, this is not a pink gin. Well, but, you know. I, I'm drinking water tonight, so, you know, because John Waters was with her, so I'm drinking water in respect to both of them because I actually like them no matter what they think of me. I, I think sure. they're good people and their heart's in the right place. But you won't get anywhere by bitching against each other. So I'm asking them to no. stop. I mean, I don't really yeah. have a go at them ever, you know. And I keep saying I support them fully. But there's a yeah. couple of issues, right? The idea I said when I was drinking my pink gin was that I said, there's no need to fight for your rights. That's the wrong thing. And people saying they're taking away your rights. Because otherwise, what they me can't. and you, the message, the message me and you are trying to get out tonight would be watered down if we then fight for our rights because they're taking them away, we're then contradicting ourselves hand over fist. If I yeah. said to you, no, Vin, nobody can take away the rights, folks. Nobody. Well, if I, well, let's say I even said to you, Vin, Vin, I want you to give your rights to me. I want you to give your right to travel to me, right? How would you even do uh, that? Can you put it in a box? Okay, uh, let me see. I'll try some pixie dust. Yes. Uh, I'm getting something. Uh, I'm getting something, Vin. <laughs> now, can you still walk outside? Well, Hang on, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I tried to say to people. Like, even if you cut your legs off, you can't yep. give away your right to travel. It's an impossibility. That's what the Constitution is trying to say to you. Well, you have I, I don't like. I don't like that word travel, but I like to say, you know, I mean, if anybody asks, hey, where are you going or what are you doing or blah, blah, blah. And if I feel like responding, I, yeah. might, I might say, hey, I'm just roaming about creation. <laughs> rolling across God's creation yeah well I'm just roaming about you know I'm just I don't yeah. know where did you come from and, and another thing there, with, uh, <laughs> with, with John Murray tonight uh, we better just finish on that the guardie yeah. came back now very important Ian, and this is something that really pisses me off the guards kept him in a cell for about four or five hours am I right yes as soon as he gave the name and address they then released him and then arrested yeah. him again so they kept him for about four or five hours in a cell. 
they let him go. Then they rearrested him and they said, oh, because you did something back in March, right? Yeah. Now, you and I know, Vin, unless the guard had a summons for that, you can't apply for it now because uh-huh. it's out of time. That's the first issue. The second issue is... Uh, sorry, just to clarify, this was to do with the, the tables station. outside. Just, just to clarify, yeah. that was to do with the tables outside as well. It was nothing. John That's didn't right. do anything. No, no. Yeah. But just to then say they arrested him and the guard brought him back in and put him back in the cell for another hour and then let him go again. Now, that yeah. is an absolute abuse of power. And that Absolutely. guard will find out very quickly how serious it is to deprive someone of their liberty. There's people in Mount Joy doing 10 years for depriving people of their liberty. And what yeah. the guard done there was despicable. Now, I very rarely have a go at guards, but what the guard did there was despicable. He took no business in. arresting him on a civil matter anyway. Well, not only that, but even if he arrested him, he'd say, right, I know who you are, blah, blah, blah. So I'm arresting yeah. you for that, and I'll get you at summons now, and here you go, you can appear in court. Why did he yeah. need to take his liberty away and put him back in a cell for another hour? He wanted well, to prove that I am a Nazi, I can do what I like, and you can do nothing about it, while I shun the Constitution after upholding. And the only reason I'm getting paid, by the way, is because the Constitution exists. So that's yeah. despicable. And if that's going on among the Gardaí and Trim, it needs to stop as a matter of urgency. Because I think you'll find the country will it. Yeah, because what I don't like to see is people having go at guards. And I tell no. you why. Because they're the first people we call when there's trouble. They're the first man who would jump into a lake if you were drowning. And I've seen guards do it before. Absolutely. And they put those guardy, the good name that they've built up over the years, they stamp it in dog shite by doing what they did to, yeah, with they John it. Murray. And so, so people might think I'm against guards. No, I'm not. Absolutely no. not. More, I want to right. get that. No, absolutely, Ben, and I know that. But I just wanted to get that message out very clearly tonight because you and I always have our enemies that nitpick through everything we say. And That's also, true. Ben, I just want to say that these draconian measures that the government bring in and Egghead Donnelly knows very well he doesn't have any such powers whatsoever. I mean, surely he has a brain and that big egghead. So he knows he doesn't. But what it is doing by bringing in this nonsense and, and pretending the guards can somehow kick in the door of your house, yeah, I'd love to see that. Please do it because I'm short a few quid. Well, so please do here, it. Here's the question. Here's the question. Somebody needs to write to Stephen Donnelly and say, Stephen, if you wouldn't mind, please... Tell me, what article exactly and what provision of the Constitution are you relying upon to do X, Y, Z or to state X, Y, Z? Because they must be relying on some part of the Constitution to do this. So which part is it, Stephen Donnelly? <laughs> well, I, I'd be it's, very curious it's to know about article, that. It's probably Article 52. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there are actually more. The the the, the uh, there are other provisions in the constitution that people many people don't know about uh, the transitory yeah. provisions. But yeah. yeah, so that goes up to sixty four. Well, but anyway, ask yeah, right. which one, uh, uh, yeah. Stephen? Which one? Yeah. So so. That's and I think uh, I think we're going to have to call it a night. It's uh, it's we're going yeah. over the time. We're going over the time as normal, Vin. We always enjoy the chats, and I'm sure everybody <laughs> else does too. So look, thanks to everybody. Look, the guard is not your enemy. Do it the way no. John Murray did. We have to stand up for our rights, not fight for them. They can never be given away, but just stand up and exercise them. If you're arrested, so what? You know, yeah. remember, you no will have a great... The, the courts offer you remedy. Remember, you get remedy through the courts. And I'm telling you, folks, losing your liberty when they weren't entitled to do it ching, 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 ching. That's all I can say to you. So don't be afraid. Don't be giving out. Do exactly... Compose yourself because yesterday in Aldi, you know, I was down and I wasn't happy the way I, you know, I should have composed myself. I normally do. I didn't that time. Well, I apologize. I saw, I saw your uh, online apology and I hope that man sees it too, Ben. A fair play to you for doing it. And quite frankly, I was actually going to ring you and roast you about that because you were a little. I was, you know, yeah. Little, and I wasn't happy with it because I sometimes preach, preach, mm-hmm. but I know when you're under stress and everything else especially yeah. with guards and that, that it's very easy not to uh, behave in the right way. And normally, I wouldn't yeah. mind, normally with guards and everything else, I'm grand with all of that. That doesn't phase me. But it was just somebody oh, else. Okay. Anybody can have a bad day. I've had bad yeah, days. Yeah, I've had a bad day. But anyway, we got over well, it. Fair, we get over well, fair it. play to you. You did the right thing. Uh, and I, 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 will, I will learn from that myself. We're all still learning. Nobody knows everything. Yeah. And myself, we don't claim to know it either. So on nope. that note, folks, uh, enjoy your weekend. 
and yeah. uh, go easy on the pink jeans, Ben. No. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you soon, folks. Over now and bye, bye, bye. Good night. God bless you.